Gospel reading and homily for the 28th Sunday in Ordinary Time, Year A. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to the chief priests and the elders of the people, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to all who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared. My oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them, and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroying those murderers, and burned their town. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready, but as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out on the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike, and the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at his guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment, and he said to him, How did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? The man was silent. Then the king said to his attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth, for many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. In Holman Hunt's famous painting of Jesus, the light of the world, Jesus stands with a lantern in his hand, knocking on the door of the house, under which is written, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. But it's interesting, I think, to note that the latch is on the inside. Yes, Jesus knocks on our door, all right, but it's up to us to open it. He doesn't force entry. The people invited to the wedding feast today turned down the invitation, and the same happened to the rich young man in another passage in the Gospel. Jesus invited him to leave his cushy lifestyle behind and follow him, but he turned down the offer and he walked away a rather sad man. But Jesus didn't run after him and gave him a dressing down. Even though God doesn't force us to follow him, there will always be a basic sadness in turning down his invitation. Remember, on another occasion, Jesus wept over Jerusalem because his own people did not accept him. But I think he'd be weeping buckets these days with what's sadly happening in the region. Our response to follow Jesus, however, must not be half-hearted or complacent. Being a Catholic Christian could turn out to be little more than a mere label we use. That's like taking heaven for granted. The man minus his wedding garment would fit into this category. Some scripture scholars tell us that the wedding garment refers to ongoing repentance in our lives. Just like most people take a shower every day, so too we should regularly clean the inner man or woman by examining our conscience frequently and confessing our sins. It's said that Paul, Pope Paul, John Paul II, never missed a week without confession. We've discarded the wedding garment when we play down the radical nature of God's call and end up being little more than a kind of a nominal Catholic or a nominal believer. Being a baptized Catholic, for instance, doesn't give us an automatic passport into the heavenly realm. A baptismal certificate may be needed for admittance to the Catholic school, but it's no guarantee of entry into eternal life. 
unless we take our faith seriously. Someone remarked to me recently that plenty of people go to Holy Communion, now we're not here to judge, but the number of people going to confession lags a long way behind. But for anyone who's been to Magigori like I have, there's a long cues for this sacrament of God's mercy, with several priests hearing for hours on end. Or maybe we consider ourselves sinless. But that stands in contrast to the words of Scripture, which are, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. A woman was once overheard praying for her husband. Lord, can you please, please give my husband one little fault? The book of Proverbs in the Old Testament tells us that the just man falls seven times a day. If that's true, it adds up to a lot of repenting in the space of a week. So is complacency or smugness causing us to ditch the wedding garment? The gospel calls for a wholehearted response with no hint of complacency. In this way, proudly wearing our wedding garment, we'll feel right at home in the heavenly banquet hall. Thank you all for listening. God bless you all.